If you don't have a small business, then you're paying way too much in tax. Let me explain. My name's Ed Jones, and I'm a certified small business tax specialist, and I've been preparing taxes for small business owners, including myself, for well over a dozen years. And one thing I discovered back in my early youth when I started uh, doing my own business on the side, because I always knew you had to have a business that just seemed practical to make the extra money you needed to help pay the extra bills, take the vacation or whatever, that uh, there was a lot of advantages for small business owners in the tax code. Uh, what I didn't really discover until after I started preparing to taxes is just how many of those advantages there were and how I was not taking full advantage of what was available to me. And so uh, I developed my what, what you have in front of you, my tax team model, is just a way of helping explain to my clients and friends and family and stuff uh, the advantages of having a small business and the difference of the two. And what most people don't realize is the tax code is really written, it's almost like two codes, it's written heavily in favor of business owners and there's a reason. And, and the regular old W-2 wage earner, the guy out making a living, actually doesn't have near the advantages or benefits and ends up paying uh, more in taxes on their income than they would maybe if they had a small business. That's not to say there's anything wrong with having a W-2 type job. I choose myself uh, for the, my tax purposes to work as a W-2 worker, just like everybody else. I, I let somebody else take care of the liability and the cost of equipment and updates and maintenance. I choose to spend my time doing what I enjoy doing, that's preparing the taxes, let somebody else have the headaches. But also on the side, I have my own internet uh, home-based business because, again, like I said, if you don't, you're just paying too much in tax. And if you look at the left side of the, of the team model, you'll see where I'm talking about the wage earner. You know, a wage earner uh, has taxes taken out, both for income and Social Security and Medicare, of their paycheck every pay period. And at the end of the year when they get their W-2, it gives the totals of those numbers. And what a lot of people don't really realize is, is everyone's entitled to either a standard deduction and if they have enough expenses, uh, which is getting harder to do the way the tax code is going, uh, they can itemize their deductions and then everyone is given a personal exemption. Every man, woman, and child has one. It just sometimes there's rules on who gets to use it. But when you total the standard deduction, we're going to keep it simple, the standard deduction and the personal exemption, and these are numbers for the 2014 tax year, so they went up a little bit over last year, uh, that totals the $10,150. What that's telling you is no matter how much money you make using the standard deduction personal exemption, that's the most that your income is going to be reduced by. Everything over that figure is taxed. And like the little uh, graph at the bottom there shows, the higher your income goes, that's our red line there, the higher the red line goes, the more you pay in taxes because that 10150 stops, period. Uh, if you're married, obviously the numbers double. It's 20,300 uh, instead of 10,150. But usually when you're married, your both spouse work because it's almost a necessity nowadays. The income is going to go up, which is going to make it, again, the same situation. More income past that mark, the more you're going to pay in tax. So if you look at my example I put down at the bottom, uh, I show $20,000 in yearly income from the W-2. Now you take the standard deduction personal exemption amount out, which is $10,150, and that's going to leave you owing uh, your taxable income, owing tax on $9,850. Now, if let's say you made $40,000. Okay, yeah, same thing. You got the ten thousand one fifty for your standard deduction and personal exemption. That's going to leave you with twenty nine thousand eight hundred fifty in taxable income. As you can see, the more money you make, the higher the taxable income goes, and that's what you pay tax on. And let me say this: Uncle Sam loves W two wage earners because the more you make, the more they get to tax. Bottom line. So now let's look at the right side of the the T. Uh, that's our small business owners. Okay, you've got two basic categories. I mean, you, there's a lot of ways you can break it down, but basically it's in two separate little categories. You've got your brick and mortar. That's your mom-pop stores. That could be the car dealer, the restaurant, 
uh, dry cleaners, the lawn care service guy, whatever. And then you had the non-store retail type of small business owner, which is what most individuals participate in. That's the home-based business. That's the internet marketer. That's the uh, cosmetic people and the uh, in, independent insurance sales people, maybe. So two basic categories. Everyone still has the same tax advantages. It's just how they're used and which one uses what. Now, for the most part, your brick and mortar small business owner, they're going to have mortgage or rent payments. They've got utilities. They've got insurance. They have wages. Remember those W-2 guys the government really likes? Those small business owners are the ones who create most of those. Uh, and it could, uh, they have advertising expense, equipment, licensing, and some brick and mortar businesses like your flower shop owners. They have auto expenses also. For the most part, our non-store retailer, even though they have the same business deductions, their biggest uh, single deduction is generally the mileage because they don't generally have a storefront, uh, which means they wouldn't have the utilities. And they, they do have advertising expenses and they do have licensing depending on where they live. Uh, they would have depreciation on any equipment they have, same for both. But where they really make out, I guess you could say, is with the mileage. Uh, a small uh, business owner who has a mileage type of deduction, they get 56 cents a mile for 2014 for every mile that they spend pursuing their business and building their business. That adds up real quick. You know, a small uh, cosmetic lady puts 25 or 30,000 miles on her vehicle in a year. You know, you're looking at uh, $17,000, $18,000 in deduction right there. That's a big bite against income. And, and, and again, the reason why I say that the code is written heavy in favor of small business owners, you know, if you look at the SBA, they're the ones who keep up with who's what and what's a small business or not. And there's a lot of different categories you can break it down into, but typically they look at the average small business as one generating about $7 million or so in, in business and have less than 500 employees. That's, that's most businesses in America. Think about it. And, and the tax code is written in favor of those small business owners because what they're hoping is that they give one person some advantages and some breaks and they become successful and they become profitable. What they're going to do is they're going to go out and hire more W-2 employees as they expand their business. And again, the, the W-2 employees' his expenses are very limited. So the more W-2 employees the government has, the more taxes they can generate. So it's beneficial. They help one person out, and he hires 20. 20 to 1 is a good ratio. What if he hired 50 or 100? So the code favors a small business owner for that reason. Now, there's, that's why I say it's no big deal. If you have a job, you have a W-2 income, what you really need, though, on, on the side is your own home-based business. The, any, any expenses that you create building your business reduces your taxable income. And if your expenses exceed your small business income, then that reduction also helps bring down that taxable income on the W-2 side, increasing your potential for a refund or and worse, bringing down what you might owe if you didn't have enough withholding to start with. So the advantages of having a small business way, way, way outweigh the not having a small business, the difference. And uh, it's just uh, it's just smart, mo uh, smart move. Nothing says you can't have both. And if you uh, build your income large enough, you might at some point in time, decide that you don't want to be a W-2 worker, you want to be strictly a small business owner, and if your business expands and grows, now you're hiring the W-2 workers. Win-win for the government. Uh, there's another a little side thing I also like to look at on the reason why the government likes individuals to have a home-based business. If, uh, for example, something happened to your job, you're laid off or a temporary work shut down or the company closes down, if, you, if your only source of income is that W-2 and the job market is not the best in the world right now, then now you're going to need government assistance to get by until you can get another job and get going again. That means unemployment, food stamps, maybe some housing assistance. Uh, Uncle Sam's got a real big deal about it. They love to spend money. Everybody knows that. You can tell by our national debt. 
But what they don't like is spending money on things they don't want to spend it on. They've got their own pet projects, and they'd rather spend our money on their projects than on us in the way of unemployment and those type things. So if you have your own home-based business and something happens to your job, you might be able to ramp up your uh, small business to the point that you don't need the assistance. Win-win for the government. They're not paying out expenses. You're just taking care of yourself. And if you ramp your business up, who knows? You might go hire somebody. Win-win. And even if you have a business that doesn't hire employees, that's okay because if you're making a big profit, where are you going to spend your money? Most likely at that brick-and-mortar business that will have to expand if their business continues to get profitable. So I hope that kind of gives you a, just a quick little idea of why it is to everyone's advantage to have some type of a home base or small business of their own and uh, why there's still nothing wrong with having a W-2 job. There's a lot of people who like what they do. They just don't like that they don't get paid what they feel they're worth. They can solve that problem by creating that second income and continue doing what they like to do. Uh, and, you know, in addition to the, uh, the T model here that, you know, explained all that, I would like to say that one of the, I mentioned earlier, one of the things I learned when I started preparing taxes myself was all of the benefits that I failed to take advantage of in my early years when I was just doing network marketing. And so as it, with that in mind, what I have done is I have sat down the last couple of years we've been working on putting together a very user-friendly, plain English, no too much, at least as much as possible, too much tax garb to uh, better explain for you the tax advantages in the tax code. Item by item, we take the uh, sole proprietor method, which is the most common method of filing taxes for small businesses. Uh, we took the uh, Schedule C, which is the form that the sole proprietor would use. We broke it down line by line. And, and and I will say this, the intent is not to necessarily say go do it yourself, but because I highly believe you ought to let a professional do your tax because that's what they do. But at the same time, you need to know what needs to be in there to make sure that you're getting everything you're entitled to. Just like doctors and lawyers, not every tax person are the same. They have you have specialists and and so if you don't have the right tax preparer, at least if you're armed with all the right information, then you have a way to say, hey, you left this off, or where is that, or why didn't you get this? And that way you, you, know, that way you make sure that you get everything that you're legally entitled to. Because I will say this, for every dollar worth of deductions that you don't properly take, that's a dollar more in taxes you're paying. I mean, it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a fact. You get the deductions, you lower your tax bill. So after you, after you get through downloading the tax team model, You'll also have access where you can purchase the book. Uh, we've reduced the price quite a bit. Tax season's upon us, and we're trying to help uh, uh, help you in building your business. But at the same time, uh, it's a tax-deductible expense, and it's, I believe, something every small business owner needs.